Hello and welcome to your next chapter on Canadian criminal law. We are on chapter number 8, Regulatory Offences. Regulatory offences are created by governments to regulate conduct and prevent harm rather than punishing inherently wrongful conduct. Let's discuss some key points about regulatory offences. Firstly, regulatory offences are usually presumed to be strict liability offences which means that the Crown only needs to prove the actus reus of the offence. This puts the burden on the accused to prove the absence of negligence or a reasonable mistake of fact in order to avoid conviction. However, some regulatory offences may be full menstrual offences, provided there is a clear indication that menstrual is required. This means that prosecution must prove not only the actus reus, but also the mens rea, which is the guilty intent or knowledge of wrongdoing. In addition, some absolute liability offences are committed whenever the relevant actus reus is proved. However, these offences may violate Section 7 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms if there is a possibility that they will result in imprisonment or otherwise violate right to life, liberty and security of the person. And finally, the courts have recognized a defense of officially induced error that can apply to both criminal and regulatory offenses. This defense can be used when a person has relied on an official statement or action that turns out to be incorrect or misleading. So that's a brief overview of regulatory offenses. Remember that these offenses are created to regulate, conduct and prevent harm as they have specific requirements and defenses that apply to them. Now let's move on to the case laws. The first case law is Sol Se Marie. This case involved a charge against the city of Sol for discharging refuse into public waterways which caused pollution. The charge was made under Section 32, Subsection 1 of the Ontario Water Resources Act. And the key issue in this case was whether the Crown had to prove mens rea or the intent to commit a crime for a public welfare offence of pollution under Section 32, Subsection 1 of the Ontario Water Resources Act. The Supreme Court of Canada held that the offence was one of strict liability, which meant that the Crown did not have to prove mens rea. The ratio of the decision was that public welfare offences such as pollution under Section 32, Subsection 1 of the Ontario Water Resources Act are offences of strict liability. This means that the Crown need not prove mens rea. The decision was important because it established that the regulatory offences which are designed to protect the public and prevent harm are often presumed to be strict liability offences. The next case we'll be discussing is Reference Race Section 94, Subsection 2 of the Motor Vehicles Act, British Columbia. This is a Canadian legal case that dealt with the constitutionality of a section of the Motor Vehicle Acts of British Columbia. The case revolved around the question whether the section of the Act that imposed both absolute liability and the possibility of imprisonment for certain offences was in contravention of Section 7 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. In this case, Supreme Court of Canada found that this section was unconstitutional because it violated the principles of fundamental justice. The court held that the principles of fundamental justice include the principle that the innocents should not be punished. The court held that the principle of fundamental justice include the principle that the innocent should not be punished. The court also found that a law that imposes absolute liability for an offence, making a person liable for an offence, whether or not they took steps to avoid being at fault, violates the principle of fundamental justice. The court held that any possibility of deprivation of life, liberty and security of a person from an absolute liability offence offends the charter. Therefore, the Crown must justify such offences on the basis of public interest. In this case, the court found that the Crown failed to show that the public interest in ridding the road of bad drivers was proportional to the limitations of public interests by imprisoning them. Okay, moving on to the next case, the case of R versus Wholesale Travel Incorporated. In this case, Wholesale Travel was charged with violating sections 36, subsection 1, clause A and section 37, Point three, subsection 2 of the Competition Act, which prohibited false and misleading advertising. Wholesale Travel argued that these sections were unconstitutional because they violated their rights under Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, 
They specifically argued that the requirement for a timely retraction and the reverse owner's provisions were unconstitutional. The Supreme Court of Canada ultimately found that the requirement for a timely retraction was unconstitutional because it violated Section 7 of the Charter, which protected an individual's right to life, liberty and security of the person. The court found that the requirement was an unconstitutional form of absolute liability, meaning that it imposed strict liability on the accused without any regard for whether they had acted with intent or knowledge. However, the court upheld the strict liability offences in this section which require the accused to establish a due diligence defence on balance of probabilities. The court found that it was not unconstitutional to create an offence for which the mensria component is negligence and that a due diligence defence is available. The court also found that the reverse onus provision, which required the accused to prove a defence on balance of probabilities, was constitutional under certain circumstances, but only if it did not infringe on the accused's right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty, which is protected by Section 11D of the Charter. So, in summary, R versus Wholesale Travel is a case that dealt with the constitutionality of Section 36, Subsection 1, Clause A, and Section 37.3, Subsection 2 of the Competition Act. And the court found that the requirement for a timely retraction was unconstitutional but that the strict liability offences and the reverse owners provisions were constitutional under certain circumstances. Moving on to the next case, R v. Rahim. A Canadian legal case called R v. Rahim, this case dealt with the interpretation of offence of stun driving under section 172 of the highway traffic. This case dealt with the interpretation of offence of stun driving under section 172 of the Highway Traffic Act. The accused Rahim was caught driving 51 km over the speed limit and was charged with stun driving. The Justice of Peace interpreted the offence as one of the strict liability and rejected the constitutional argument, while the appeal court judge held that the offence was an absolute liability offence, punishable by imprisonment and therefore contrary to Section 7 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. However, the court later found that the appeals judge was incorrect in holding that stun driving was an absolute liability offence. Instead, the court determined that the offence was properly regarded as a public welfare offence and was prima facie a strict liability offence. The availability of incarceration suggested strict liability because of the presumption of constitutionality, meaning that it would take very clear language to create an absolute liability offence that was properly punishable by incarceration. Overall, this case highlights the importance of properly interpreting the elements of an offence and considering constitutional arguments in criminal cases. The last case of this chapter and this part in your syllabus is Levi's City v. Tetriolt. 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 Okay, whatever it is. This is a Canadian legal case that dealt with the issue of officially induced error in relation to motor vehicle related offences under the Highway Safety Code. In this case, the respondent, Tetriolt, was convicted of putting a motor vehicle into operation without having paid registration fees. The Postal Service did not deliver the Notice of Registration Renewal, which it returned to Société de l'Assurance Automobile du Québec, short for SAAQ, on, on February 14, 2002. In April 2002, the police stopped the vehicle and observed that its registration had expired due to failure to pay the fees for the year in progress and had not been renewed. The court found that the offence that responded was charged with belonged to a vast category of offences known as regulatory offences. These type of offences usually fall into the category of strict liability offences rather than the offences of mensria. The court found that the provision of regulation in no way places the burden of proving mensria on the prosecution nor does it include any expression of legislature's intent to create an absolute liability offence. The respondent argued that he was not aware of the requirement to pay registration fees and therefore he had the defence of due diligence. However, the court found that the respondent did not prove that he had taken any action or attempt to obtain information and thus his defence of due diligence was not consistent with the concept of due diligence. The court also considered the defence of officially induced error which is available in Canadian criminal law. However, 
In this case, the court found that the respondent had not established the conditions under which it is available had been met. The respondent had not taken any actions to find about his legal obligations and his passive ignorance was not a valid defense in criminal law. Therefore, the court held that the conviction stands and the respondent should have been found guilty as charged and imposed the fine prescribed by law. In summary, Levi City v. Tetriold is a case that dealt with the issue of officially induced error in relation to motor vehicles related offences under the Highway Safety Code. The court held that the respondent did not have a defence of due diligence or officially induced error and that the offence was a strict liability offence. As such, the conviction stands and the respondent was found guilty and fined accordingly. In the next class, we will move on to the next part which is extensions of criminal liability. And the first topic and the first chapter in this part would be aiding and abetting. See you in the next class.